Hello, my Nazca lines. I'm the Empire Ian, and welcome to Batty Decks, the series where I give you an in-depth look at a deck that's just a little batty. So I've been working on an Earthbound Servant deck for quite some time, basically as soon as the cards were announced. Harmonic Synchrofusion was just that cool. Early on, I decided Runic was the best thing to pair with the deck. I discovered that it could make Denglong, Barone, and Dragostopelia, which is honestly not bad. I was getting ready to show off my build when the cards were finally released. And then MBT beat me to it. His build had everything that mine did and more. He came to a lot of the same conclusions I had about the deck and found some interactions I hadn't. But by the end of it, I don't think either of us were really satisfied with where the deck landed. So I decided to take my build and his build and try to make an even better deck instead of just showing off that earlier worse version of the same deck. That's what we do in the Yu-Gi-Oh community after all. We share our ideas, we incorporate the ideas of others into better and better builds to help us all get better. And then Barone got banned. So then I had the brew of the deck once again, landing on Cheng Ying as a replacement. So after all that, let me now finally show you my contribution to Earthbound Prisoner Runic. So here's the deck. For those who don't know, Earthbound Prisoners are a spin-off of the Earthbound Immortal archetype played by a weird spin-off of the Dark Signers that shows up in Arc V. The cards only just released a little while ago, introducing their decently powerful monsters and their very cool card Harmonic Synchro Fusion, which allows them to Synchro Summon and Fusion Summon at the same time. They get to search that, which is incredibly cool. Unfortunately, it's missing most of the rest of a game plan, so we need to supplement all that. Runic is one of the best supplemental engines in the entire game. You can see where I'm going here. This quick play spell focused archetype is full of cards that are all either instant fusion or some form of interruption or removal. The fusions that they summon are the only runic monsters that actually exist, and each of them are vaguely useful as control tools, but also for being bodied on field. What ties it all together is the field spell that lets you use the spells from hand on your opponent's turn and lets you put up the three of them back in the deck to draw that many cards, creating both incredible recursion and a powerful draw engine. Together these cards can both make a formidable board, but also allow you to stay in the game if that board is broken, or as you wait for your ability to actually attack to return. It also lets you dig deeper for your combo pieces and can keep you alive if you didn't draw a starter. With that said, let's take a look at the card by card. Starting with our Earthbound Prisoners, we have our starter, Groundkeeper. This guy on summons summons one of the other guys from the deck or grave, and unfortunately not hand. It locks you to the Harmonic Synchro Fusion summoning types, Fusion and Synchro, but we were pre-locked by Harmonic Synchro Fusion anyways. It also protects Earthbound monsters from destruction when there's a field spell on the field for some reason. Don't know why. Stone Sweeper can summon itself if there's a field spell, which luckily the runic archetype has because the earthbound ones are pretty bad. More importantly, you can discard it from hand to search a level 3 or lower fiend tuner, getting you access to your starter. Then we have Linewalker, which is our summon off of the groundkeeper. Linewalker searches the bad field spell or harmonic synchro fusion on summon, uh, so you can guess what we're doing. You can also banish it from the grave to make your opponent bounce a monster from the extra deck back to the extra deck and then summon it back, which can fuck up the proper summoning conditions on some monsters and can trigger Geo Kraken. This is an important search card, but we only need to play one of it since we can summon it from the deck. It is a bit of a hard garnet, but you could also just normal summon it, only missing out on the one star tuner to go into Chang Ying. If you want to play a second copy for safety, just cut called by. It's not really essential. Lastly, we have harmonic synchro fusion itself. This does what it says on the tin, using one tuner and one non-tuner on field to summon a synchro and a fusion monster that the two cards are legal material for. This card has all sorts of funny use cases, but the earthbound servant monsters are the main consistent way to use it. You have to be careful what you choose though, because this card does not count as either a proper synchro summon or a proper fusion summon, so any effects that rely on that won't be live and you can't revive them from the grave. It's very annoying. Next we have some Yangzing stuff all connected to our Denglong boy in the extra deck. Here we have the biggest departure from the previous builds I've seen, the addition of Zephyr Neo. Why are we running this when it doesn't really do much for the deck? Well, we want to use Denglong as material for Ultimaya Zulkin, but nine pillars of the Yangzing needs a Yangzing card on field to activate its Omni Negate. Luckily, Denglong's summon effect does not miss timing unlike the rest of the archetype. Zephyr Niu is the best target for that because of its large defense stat that makes it hard to walk over, and because it's a pendulum card, so we can set it up as a pendulum scale if we end up drawing into it. Nine Pillars doesn't actually care if the card it destroys is a monster or a spell, so that turns the trap back online without having to be summoned, which obviously we can't do if it's in hand. And yeah, here's the Nine Pillars that we're playing, which is a searchable counter trap Omni Negate for the low cost of destroying a Yangzing card on field. Luckily, we have Zephyr Niu for that. Now for the runic spells. We're loaded up on as many as possible to ensure access, so we're playing some of the bad ones, just bear with me. As always, any one of these cards in addition to their individual effect can also instant fusion out a runic monster for free, and they're each a once per turn activation that costs you your next battle phase. First up, we have Freezing Curses, which targets an effect monster your opponent controls to negate it until the end of the turn, and then banishes three off the top of the opponent's deck. Next is Tip, which adds a runic card to hand, and then banishes one. Slumber protects a monster from destruction, and then banishes three. Flashing Fire destroys a special summon monster your opponent controls, and then banishes two. Spining Storm banishes 
banishes cards from the top equal to the number of cards the opponent controls. Destruction targets and destroys a spell trap your opponent controls and then banishes four. And lastly, Dispelling, the worst one, makes your opponent discard a random card from hand when they add a card to hand except by drawing, meaning the only way to activate this thing is to wait for the opponent to add or just use the fusion effect instead. It's like a bad version of the worst effect on Masked Hero Dark Law. As I said, we just need access to more of these, anyone will do it. And the reason for that is our two Runic Fountain, the field spell. This card allows you to activate Runic Quick Play spells from hand during your opponent's turn, and then on the resolution of a Runic Quick Play spell, you can shuffle up the three Runic Quick Play spells from Grave to the deck, and then draw that many cards. This grants you both resiliency in the grind game, which you will have to engage in, and lots of draw power to get back your resources that your one-for-one -one interactions will deplete. Lastly, we have our fairly limited non-engine. You don't need much non-engine when almost the entire deck is interaction. We have three Droll and Lockbird, which can just absolutely shut down a turn. One Call by the Grave to stop Droll and Lockbird and other hand traps. Honestly, we can get shut down by several hand traps, so this is pretty good to have. Three Imperm is just pretty solid this format, and most formats. It won't fully stop like a Snake Eyes player or a U-Bell player, but it'll stop a lot. Now for the extra deck. It's honestly nice to see an extra deck with no blue cards in it for once. First up, we have our Runic Monsters, which can be summoned by any of our quick play spells. Firstly, we have Slipnir, which can do a pretty good approximation of SP Little Knight by banishing itself and an opponent's monster, and then also makes tokens for lore reasons. But more importantly, it's a free level 9 for Cheng Ying. Freki can banish cards from the top of the deck if it's involved in an attack, doesn't do or take battle damage, and on destruction as a runic quick play from the grave to the hand. More importantly, it's a free level 5 for Ultimaya Zulkin. Gary can't be destroyed by card effects and on summon it as a non-quick play spell from the grave to the hand, letting you get back the field spell if your opponent destroys it. When destroyed by battle, it also takes another card on the field down with it. And then we have the most important one, Hugin, which on summon adds the field spell to hand, making every runic spell access to the field spell, which she then protects with her effect to replace any destruction effects of your cards with banishing her. If she's destroyed instead, she goes back to the extra deck to be used again. And lastly, she's a free 2 for making Deng Long. Now for our regular fusion monsters. Remember, we are actually fusion summoning in this deck. Geo Gremlina is honestly a pretty cuttable monster. It doesn't do a whole lot for this deck since we don't have repeatable access to our fusion monsters. Maybe replace it with a second Slipnir. It adds Earthbound from deck to hand, but there's not really a good one to search once you've reached this gal. She can also target a Dark Synchro to let it attack directly, but we don't play any of those except for the zero attack Zulkin. Lastly, it could do burn damage to the opponent if the monster is destroyed by the effect of an Earthbound monster, which would require you to get the other better Earthbound monsters on the field first. We only have one fusion card. Our searcher can grab it from the grave, but we only play one of those now. Groundkeeper can summon it from the grave to activate it, and the stone sweeper can search Groundkeeper from deck, which makes it a little easier to get to, but the fusion card also needs to synchro summon at the same time, so good fucking luck getting that to go off anyways. But hey, maybe it'll come up. If you're going to go through all that trouble though, a much better target if you had the materials for it is Geokraken. When it's summoned, you get to search a field spell, really cool for getting our fountain, and then when your opponent special summons from the extra deck, you can destroy as many monsters your opponent special summon this turn, and then burn them for 800 for each card you destroyed, which is what is supposed to activate Geogramlina's effect. A nice way to punish the opponent for building up. And our last fusion target is our primary one, and oddly the easiest one to make, Dragostepelia. This is what you're going to be making most of the time. Needing only a fusion monster, which we can make for free, and a dark monster, which is most of our deck, this guy is a permanent negate on monsters on the field every turn for as long as he remains on the field by placing Predator Counter on them. You can also mess up levels, if that matters. And now for the synchros! Barone de Fleur is the best synchro in the game, having both a pop and an Omni negate. The best part of it is we could make it early in the combo to protect us from Nibiru. Now we just have Cheng Ying. Now, Cheng Ying is not as powerful as Barone, that's obvious, but it's still a formidable card. Having a Banish and a huge beater on board does diversify our end board a bit, considering we make so many negates already. It can really help assemble an OTK, which is really good for a deck that has to wait a long time to attack. And that Banish effect triggers on the Runic Banish effect, but you can have a bit of control over when you Banish by a well-placed Runic card. Cyber Slash Harpy Lady is one of the better generic level 8 synchros in the game, who can bounce a monster back to hand when a spell or trap is activated. Like a Runic spell, perhaps. This is definitely not supposed to be part of your turn 1 end board, but it is a decent option for recovery as something you can Harmonic Synchro Fusion into at the same time as Geo Kraken. Stardust Warrior is a 6, which is something you might need to make occasionally. It draws you a card, that's all you need to know. The same goes for Coral Dragon, but both of these cards need to be Synchro Summoned to get their effects, so don't make them with Harmonic Synchro Fusion. Ultimaya Zulkin is a bit of a weird one that you make by sending two level 5 or higher monsters of the same level to the grave, one tuner and one non-tuner. That'll be Denglong, which we make with Hugin and Linewalker, and either Stone Sweeper if we draw it so that we can summon itself if you had the Fountain or the Field, or Freki otherwise, assuming you have the extra spell for it. Then when you set a card, like the Nine Pillars you search off of Denglong, you can summon a level 7 or 8 Dragon Synchro. This guy also can't be targeted by effects or attacks while you control a Synchro, for what that's worth. Crystal Wing, my favorite monster in the whole game is a wonderful card to summon off of Ultimaya Zulkin's effect. 
That beautiful monster negate that the opponent can't get over easily thanks to its attack gain, both on the gate and in battle, is just wonderful. Lastly, we have Denglong, who makes the deck tick. Since being unbanned, Denglong has been looking for a home, and this might just be it. On summon, it searches a Yangzing card, getting us nine pillars, and when it leaves the field, it summons a Yangzing from deck, our Zephyr Niu. Unlike most Yangzings, this guy doesn't miss timing, meaning when we use Denglong to make Ultimaya Zulkin, we also get the summon Zephyr Niu, allowing us to make a larger, more varied end board. Now for the side deck. We've got Nibiru, which is a pretty good job of clearing board, Boards, assuming they don't have a negate for it. Valor is a poor man's imperm. Fuelos is everyone's favorite maxi replacement. Get ready to see this in a lot of decks. I don't think it's worth main decking in this deck in particular since we want to go first every time, but uh, I think you gotta have it for the side deck. I've got a side frame package in here of Gamma, three Delta, and one driver. Delta could do a lot of work in a format with a lot of powerful spell cards, and uh, I think we're in one of those. And since you're playing Delta and you already have the driver, you could also have the gamma. Then we have one slot left, so we might as well play Feather Duster to clear back row. No Ash Blossom in this one, it just isn't doing enough for me. I guess replace Valor if you want. Now that we're done with what we are playing, let's talk about what we aren't. Obviously, I cut down on the number of Earthbound Prisoner Linewalker. It just sucks to normal summon, so I'd rather just not draw any Earthbound Prisoners than draw it at all. I also cut the field spell because what is it actually doing for the deck? It's just an alternate search if you draw into Harmonic Synchrofusion, but like, why would you want it at all? It's just a terrible card that conflicts with Runic Fountain. Lastly, I'm not playing Geo Griffin because it really is not good enough either. All it does is summon an Earthbound from Grave as a quick effect, which accomplishes nothing. The other effect to destroy a card when it's destroyed and do burn is also terrible. Geo Gremlina is a more important card than Griffin too, just as a fusion target, so you just don't play Griffin. Sorry. With our deck well established, let's check out what it looks like in some games. Alright, so here we are in game one with some kind of zombie ghost fusion build. Very interesting. Um, our hand is looking alright. We got three names, we got Groundkeeper, we did draw Harmonic Synchrofusion, but uh, it is what it is. Um, I do want to say though, uh, this will be a situation in which we would want to uh, search the field spell if we were running the field spell, but uh, what does the field spell actually do for this hand, right? It gives us discard fodder, I guess? Let's actually run the game. So they're going first. They're going to go Upstart Goblin. By the way, 52 card deck, we're running Upstart Goblin. Hmm. Uh, they go Unizombie, they, they send uh, Necroworld Banshee. Banshee effect to get Zombie World. Unizombie effect. Sending Mizuki to get in the grave. Setting them up for next turn, uh, which is uh, not great. Uh, then we draw into Zephyr Neo, which is our other brick. Um, awesome, dude. Uh, so we're going to go Groundkeeper, then we're going to go Spiding Storm. Spiding Storm into Hugin, and then Linewalker comes down. Hugin effect, we're going to just toss that Destruction, grab Fountain. Fountain. Just get that established. And then we're going to go Synchro Fusion to go Denglong and drag us to Pelia. Denglong effect, grab nine pillars. We're going to go Flashing Fire to summon. There's Slipnir. We'll put back three and then draw three. See what we get off the top. Drill and lock, dispelling and flashing fire. We'll use that dispelling to put a five on board. There is Freki. Uh, obviously we have our Cheng Ying up. Uh, we got the Zoltai Zulkin. We're gonna set and then make Crystal Wing. And then we have the Zephyr Niu uh, Pendulum Scale set. Uh, we're gonna go ahead. So Dragos Pelia can once per turn put a Predator counter on the field. We're gonna go ahead and put a Predator counter on Unizombie so we don't have to use our once per turn uh, on the Unizombie next turn. Um, but yeah, we, now we have Dragos Pelia for his uh, Predator counter negate, Crystal Wing for the uh, monster effect negate, uh, Cheng Ying's Banish, Ultimaya Zulkin is chillin', uh, Zephyr Niu and Nine Pillars for a Omni negate, and then we have a Flashing Fire for a Destruction that will also trigger the Cheng Ying Banish. Uh, we also have Droll and Lockbird, which is very funny. So we're gonna pass it back to them now. Uh, after using our battle phase, remember we had to use up our battle phase so we can actually have a battle phase eventually. They're going to draw, upstart Goblin. We're gonna let that one slide. We couldn't negate it, but we decided to choose not to because we're gonna Droll and Lock after that. They're gonna Ready Fusion. I don't even know what they're trying to Ready Fusion into. I'm just gonna negate that with nine pillars. Don't wanna see it. They're gonna go Gozuki. They're gonna use zombie effect. They don't know. They don't understand. They're gonna go Zuki. I'm gonna drag a Sepelia to Gozuki. Then they're gonna link off for the new card, Flying Mary, the Wandering Ghost Ship. 
Uh, this card is actually really cool, uh, and I'm not going to let it stay on the field. Uh, so they're going to go Gozuki effect. I'm going to negate that with Crystal Wing and then use the effect of Flashing Fire to destroy the Flying Mary. I'm going to banish two off the top, negate the Gozuki. Now they have nothing on field, but also they we, we banished some cards, so that means Chengin gets to activate. We're going to banish the Zombie World and the Mezuki in the grave, and our opponent is going to scoop on that because they have nothing left to do. Pretty cool. That wasn't even full combo. Here we are in game two against the new Blue Eyes deck. Um, a bit of a pile, it looks like. But uh, why are we running polymerization? But we're not here to bully. We're here to look at this deck, uh, the one that I'm playing. Um, we have Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper, which is going to get us into our combo. We have two names. That's good. We drew into our brick. Not good. But uh, it is what it is. It... it I think it's good enough, just for the fact that you get a little bit of extra stuff on board. The odds of drawing it are not high, it's just that I'm really good at drawing bricks. Let's see what happens. We are going first this time, we're gonna go Sweeper and then Smiting Storm to get uh, our Hugin on board. Groundkeeper. Hugin, we are actually going to discard the Zephyr Neo. Uh, just because I, I want to keep the Drollin Lock in hand, I, f I have a feeling it's gonna be useful this game. Uh, and I didn't want to get rid of the flashing fire either because I need another uh, spell for the runic fountain. Uh, so we're just like we're just giving up the Ze Zephyr Neo this time. We're gonna activate the fountain, uh, summon the groundkeeper. Then we're gonna do line walker, line walker effect, grab harmonic Synchrofusion. We're gonna activate that harmonic Synchrofusion, making Denglong and drag us to Pelia. Denglong effect, grab us the nine pillars. Flashing fire here. Now we have a choice. Uh, we can either uh, make uh, our... We're going to make Slepnir, but we can either make now that we're uh, doing this draw. We're gonna, we, we're like highly likely to draw into Runic cards. So we draw into two Runic cards. We can either keep the Dunglong on field for the Nine Pillars or use the Runic cards to add make Freki and then go into uh, our Ultimate Zulkin. Uh, here comes our Cheng Ying. Uh, we pick to go with the Denglong. I just want the... In this situation, I think you want the Omni Negate over the Crystal Wing. Uh, Crystal Wing's really cool, but the Omni Negate is a little better. Um, so we're going to pass to our opponent on that. Our opponent is going to uh, set and then activate the effect of Maiden in the White. I'm going to negate that with nine pillars. I do not want them adding two cards. It's just ridiculous. They're going to go Master. I'm like, okay, why are you running Master? Uh, they activate the effect. I just decided to shotgun the Dragostopelia on that. Probably a bad idea, frankly. They go Branded uh, Regained. I was saving their destruction to hit the back row at the end of turn, which, is, as you can see, is an Imperm. Uh, they go Branded Regained, though, and I'm like, oh, that's going away. I'm not letting that happen. Uh, and then we also... Um... Uh, we'll go uh, Chengying and Runic Fountain. I don't expect to actually be able to activate the Runic Dispelling uh, this turn, so I go ahead and go Fountain for one. We grab Caldvi off the top. Uh, and I use the Chengying to banish the uh, back row. I'm wor more worried about the back row than I am Master with Eyes of Blue because they have a, I forgot they have a Link 1. I forgot they have a Link 1 now. Blue Eyes just has a Link 1. But that's okay because the Link 1 uh, just, you know, goes and grabs the thing. Now here, I access. I was playing on my laptop. I accidentally misclicked the Runic Dispelling. I did not want to activate Runic Dispelling, but I, I just misclicked. Um, should have done it. Should have waited until they actually added the Mausoleum of White. Would have been funny. Um, they go Mausoleum of White effect, send Blue Eyes, and then they use the effect of the Blink One to get Blue Eyes on the field, and they made in the White to get on the field. And now they can make a Synchro. They make Azure Eyes, and then they set two and pass. Um, I, I can't target dragon monsters with card effects. Ooh. Uh, they go, they attack into uh, Hugin. It goes back. You'll notice, by the way, that the Azure Eyes is 1900 attack thanks to the effect of Cheng Ying. Uh, so it really can't do anything against us. We go Runic Destruction. We're going to add, we're going to summon a uh, Freki. We go Fountain to draw two. 
we go Zulkin now. now. Now that our uh, nine pillars is out of the, is in the grave, we can go Zulkin now, uh, which is another reason to go nine pillars first is so you can actually go Zulkin afterwards and then go into Crystal Wing. And we can go battle. We skip the battle phase. They draw. They concede because that's not going to help them. So the thing is, uh, you're not going to get to a battle phase very easily. Um, but it doesn't really matter because your opponent will become frustrated. They, like there, there will come a point at which you have won the game without having done a single point of life point damage. Uh, like it's just like they cannot win. It's just that you also can't win because you're stuck not having a battle phase. But eventually, you will win. <laughs> All right, game three. We're up against a board breaker version of Branded. Uh, we've got a pretty nice hand. Four runic spells and stone sweeper. That's full combo, baby. We're going to go stone sweeper. Activate tip. Uh, we're not actually even going to go Hugin here. We're just going to go tip to grab the fountain straight up. Banish one off the top. And then grab our boy, groundkeeper. Groundkeeper. Grab linewalker. Linewalker. And then we're going to go ahead and summon our Hugin now. We do still need the numbers on Hugin, even if we don't need the effect. We're going to go Fountain just so we make sure we actually remember to have the Fountain on field before we activate our last Runix effect of the uh, turn. We're going to go Harmonic Synchrofusion into Danglong and Dragostopelia. Danglong effect, grab nine pillars. Flashing Fire. We're going to grab our Slipnir. Nine stars. Runic Fountain here for three. Let's get some draws. Not bad at all. Chenging. Because we draw on the Stone Sweeper, we can actually just summon the Stone Sweeper instead of using one of these spells to make Freki. Saves us a bit of resources. And then we can make Zulkin, Denglung, grab Zephyr Niu, set, and then we make our Crystal Wing. Full board, baby. It's all good. We got Chenging for Banish, Crystal Wing for Negate, Dragostopelia for Negate, Zephyr Niu and our Nine Pillars for our Negate. And then, of course, uh, Zulkin just chills. We got three runic spells in hand. I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Uh, our opponent does have a lot of board breakers in hand, though. So our opponent goes first, Albion. Uh, I consider negating it, but I decide, nah, not worth it. Uh, they decide to go Super Poly after that, uh, which is actually not awful for us, because uh, what are you Super Polying here? I got Earth, I got Water. Like, I, I've, got a, I've got an Earthworm, a Water Worm, a dragon wind, a dark plant, and a dark dragon. And there's only basically one thing you can do with all this. And let's make another Drago. Make their own Drago with our Drago and Zulkin for some reason. They went with Zulkin. It's the only other dark. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Because we have our wind, our earth, and our water. Um, <laughs> good luck, buddy. Uh, they're going to Drago our uh, Crystal Wing, trying to bait out our Crystal Wing the gate. We decide to go Freezing Curses on that, because I'd rather use the Freezing Curses now and save the Crystal Wing for something more important. We uh, banish a couple off the top. Drago is negated. They're going to go Raigeki. We're going to Nine Pillars that. No way. Ain't no way. Pops our Niu. Goes to the extra deck. They're going to go Albaz. Uh, luckily, we've got a negate for that as well. Bye-bye, Albaz. They're going to pass. We're going to draw another Runic spell. We're going to go Runic Dispelling. Summon a monster. They're going to go Drago on Chengying. We're going to Crystal Wing that. Bye-bye, Drago. Here's Freki. Fountain here to get two. Droll and Lock and a combo starter. So let's get our combo going again. And our opponent's going to scoop. Even though, again, we never had, we never got a chance to attack. In all three of these games, we never ha had a single attack declared from us. But we still won anyways. That's just the power of Runic. Well, that's the power of Runic in general. But it's the power of Earthbound Runic especially. <laughs> uh, you got to be using your Runic spells. And you have a lot of them. So you end up locking yourself out of the battle phase quite a bit uh, but eventually you reach a situation where the opponent just runs out of resources to contest you meanwhile you are drawing three cards every turn so yeah so where does this leave us well this deck is the epitome of build a board nonsense 
Uh, at least there's no Appaloosa, rest in peace. Despite this though, it's a varied end board with many different levels of interaction, some of which are even hidden information. With hand traps, spells, a counter trap, and the gates, you have a little something for everything. If you get to set up your full board, you can be almost certain your opponent will not be able to break through, unless they're very prepared for a very different metagame. Even evenly matched in Dark Ruler No More won't fully take you out of the game thanks to Fountain. The problem is getting to set up that full board. This game plan is a little fragile from stem to stern. Starting off, there's a lot of bricks in here. Thankfully, we only have one hard brick, which we can still normal summon to do a worse version of the combo, but there's enough bricks in here that can make a hand pretty well dead if you draw poorly. The combo itself can be stopped at various points by hand traps, which can let you end on at least something, but not the unstoppable board you want. Some cards like Droll and Nibiru will do a lot more damage to you than others, especially since we don't have Barone anymore. But that's the beauty of playing a runic deck. Even if you can't build a board at all, sitting there with just some runic quick play spells is still not bad. The resource loop is so powerful and the spells are such nice one-for-one -one interactions that your interrupted game plan can still get you to turn 3 to start again. Hopefully this deck serves you well or gives you ideas for your own build. If it does, feel free to let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a lot more for you if you want them. Just hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications. I'd also appreciate if you left me a like and a comment and maybe shared the video around with your friends. You can also follow me on all the usual social media sites. Just check out my website in the description below for more info. My videos are funded by my patrons and YouTube members whose names you'll see scrolling by in these credits here. For just a dollar a month, you too can find yourself here, trapped in my end screen for all eternity. In particular, I'd like to thank Haru Hayes, Flea Kill, Frog Prince Michael, and Jeremiah Coatney. A big thanks to all my other patrons and to my little community as a whole. Remember to be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and have a wonderful whatever time it is for you. Bye!